the Japanese do something slightly different from the Western world. This video will show you some of Japan's habits concerning exercise, food, philosophy, and family, which have been proven to extend their lifespan. We'll look at how the Japanese approach the crucial things in life and see if it would be wise for us to steal some of their habits. Welcome to our channel, where we share with you all of the amazing places on this planet. If you're new here, we trust you're going to love this video, and if you're a subscriber, thank you for coming back. Without further ado, here we go. Part 1. Exercise Much like the USA, Japan is a highly advanced society with access to technology and knowledge that enable its people to live happy and healthy lives. However, despite what we have in common, Japan has much lower levels of obesity than the USA. As a result, the Japanese generally weigh less and have a lower risk of heart attacks and diabetes. They also live longer lives than others in just as developed countries. The strangest thing about this, though, is that in Japan, workout culture is practically non-existent. You'd be hard-pressed to find a Japanese person who regularly goes to the gym or considers themselves a fitness nut. So how do the Japanese stay so healthy without exercise? If you ask a typical Japanese person, do you exercise, they will likely say no. However, this isn't quite as true as they may think. Although gyms are less prevalent in Japan, their cities and towns are designed to be walkable. Japanese tend to walk for trips that most Americans would use their car for, whether that's getting to work, grocery shopping, visiting friends, or going out for the day. While having a car might be non-negotiable in America, it's far more common to see people without one in Japan. In fact, the average Japanese person takes 6,500 steps a day, significantly more than the 2 to 3,000 that the average American takes. As well as having walkable cities, Japan also broadcasts an exercise routine on national TV and online. This routine is called Radio Taiso, and it's done by millions of people across Japan, from the young to the old. Those who don't do this routine will know someone who does. The exercise consists of 13 movements designed for people of any age or physical ability. It starts with holding your arms above your head. Next, you cross your arms at your chest and swing down. By step 11, you're doing gentle star jumps. This exercise is designed to be light, easy, and can be done anywhere, whether at home or in your office. You don't need a gym membership to keep yourself fit and healthy. Japan shows us that healthy exercise habits aren't always about going to the gym five times a week or being the best possible at a particular sport. Exercise can be about making small but impactful changes to get your body moving in a way that works around your everyday life. Part 2. Diet In America, Japanese food is quickly becoming popular. It started with sushi, but today we enjoy Japanese dishes such as miso soup and grilled meats. Although these dishes are popular in Japan, a core part of the Japanese diet is that it contains plenty of fresh and unprocessed food. Their most popular foods include rice, vegetables, fresh, pickled, and fermented, fish, meat, and soy products. Soy is excellent at supporting coagulation, which helps the body repair itself when cut or damaged. In Japan, they often eat soy for breakfast instead of the sugary cereals that Americans usually prefer. Another popular food is seaweed, which has minerals that help to regulate blood pressure. And the Japanese also eat plenty of fruit, including some we don't get in the USA, like certain types of apples and persimmons. In many countries, we tend to eat until we are full and physically cannot eat anymore. However, in Japan, they follow a concept called harahachibu, which means eat until you're 80% full. This prevents you from overeating and putting on weight. How they serve food is also different. In most of the world, you get a big plate and put everything you wish to eat on it. In Japan, however, they have a small bowl which is filled, eaten, then filled again, then eaten again. That process is repeated until you're 80% full. Additionally, eating is almost always done communally. When you eat with other people, it's natural to slow down, which gives your body more time to digest the food and lets you know that you're full. Another thing that makes the Japanese diet healthier than others is their love of pickled and fermented foods. These kinds of foods have very highly concentrated vitamins, which help with digestion and control blood sugar levels. They're also high in antioxidants, which can improve the immune system. They also eat plenty of fresh and tinned fish with omega-3 fatty acids, vitamins D and B12, and wonderful nutrients. The Japanese approach to food is simple. Use fresh, unprocessed ingredients, eat with other people, and don't overeat. Despite its simplicity, it works for them. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that subscribe button for more content like this. It would really help our small channel grow so we can make even more videos for you. 
Part 3. Life Philosophy We often discuss things such as music, food, literature, or sports when we talk about different cultures. However, philosophy is an essential aspect of culture that is far too often overlooked. What mindsets do people live by? What influences people's everyday decisions? How do people get to the conclusions they come to? In Japan, many people follow a life philosophy called Ikigai, which translates roughly to reason for being. It's about bringing a sense of purpose to your life and cultivating a better inner self. Do you ever feel like a clog in a machine? You get up, go to work, come home, eat, and sleep. Ikigai teaches that it's best to feel like we have a good and important place in the world. To do this, Ikagi has two important aspects. The first is objects and actions that bring value to your life. How often do you buy something just because it's cheap, or because you saw an advert, or because everyone else has it? In Japan, people are far more likely to question how something makes them feel and whether it would bring value to their lives. But it's not just objects. Take me, for example. I used to watch Game of Thrones. I didn't enjoy it, I found it boring, but I watched it because it was the done thing. However, after I realized I wasn't enjoying it, I decided to stop and only watch the TV shows I enjoyed. The second aspect of Ikigai is the feeling that life has meaning. When you get home from work, you want to feel like you've made a difference, like you have made someone happier, helped someone with their goals, or just made the world better. This is a giant leap from the selfish individualism that has become popular in much of the Western world. By living by the Ikigai philosophy, you get into a better flow state, where doing what's right and what makes you happy comes naturally. If you're miserable, it's either your mindset or circumstances that need to change. In Japan, life is about doing the right things with the right mindset. In terms of your career, there are four key questions you need to consider. 1. What are you good at? I might say that I would love to be an Olympic weightlifter. However, the blunt reality is that I have very little matchstick arms and can barely lift a chair, let alone a 200 kilogram weight. For us to be able to live lives to the fullest, we need to work in an industry we are good at. 2. What do you enjoy doing? Just because you are good at something does not necessarily mean you enjoy it. If you work a career that you don't like, even if you're the best in the world, it will not bring happiness. 3. What does the world need? What value does your work bring to the world? Just because I am great at playing video games and I enjoy it does not automatically mean it's the best career choice. Only if I can find a way for others to benefit from it can I justify turning it into my career. 4. What makes money? Another blunt reality, we need money to live. So when picking a career path, be sure to do something which will allow you to make a good enough living for the standard of life you expect. Part 4. Family Wherever you go, you'd be hard-pressed to find a society where most people don't love their family. But the Japanese take this one step further, as the family is the foundation of society. In Japan, your identity, reputation, and responsibilities are unbreakably linked to your family. So, if you do something bad, it's not just you but your whole family who will feel the shame of your actions. In America, society is considered a collection of individuals, but in Japan, it's a collection of families. Traditionally, Japanese families are large, multi-generational, with a man as the head. Today, one quarter of Japan is over 65, leaving more people to care for and impact their wisdom onto children. In Japan, respect for elders is a massive part of their culture. The elders are seen as the heads of their families and the go-to source of wisdom and knowledge. And that is some of the habits of Japanese people that, as Americans, we might want to adopt for ourselves. Perhaps if we took a leaf out of their book, we might also become healthy and live longer. So what do you think of today's topic? Comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to love this other video from our channel. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. If you have other video suggestions, why don't you tell us below? See you soon!